Yeah, good afternoon. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Saturday the 9th of April 2022. This is a weekly video where I look at my Forex charts on the daily time frame using the high probability and divergence methods from my trading book. Thank you. Uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for um, tuning in, watching the video. It's much greatly appreciated, as always. Um, coming from Non Pen in the capital of Cambodia. Um, Trying to get things done here, slowly but surely getting myself organised. Uh, it's a different sort of city if you've ever been here. It's not the prettiest city on the planet, but it's it's different. Let's put it that way. I'm quite happy to stay here for a couple of months and just see how we go. Anywho, let's go. Let's go. Um, what do we got first up? Let's have a look at the news ahead. Now, every week we do this video, I just have a look at the news ahead for the week. This is the Forex Factory Economic Calendar. So it's free you can set up to your own time zone as i said i'm in cambodia so that's like same time as bangkok same time as ho chi minh same southeast asia um so this is all on my local time so i'm only really interested in the red items they're the high impact items if you're a day trader you'd obviously watch the other news events so let's have a look sunday they got the french presidential elections not sure how that'll affect the market all right, Tuesday, nothing on Monday, Tuesday, got CPI numbers, core CPI numbers out of the US, so that's a high impact event, just something to be aware of. Picks up a bit on Wednesday, we've got New Zealand interest rate news, and they're expecting a rate rise there, so the whole world seems to be increasing interest rates, that's good for the Forex market. So, yep, that's on Tuesday, so be careful there, out of the UK, CPI numbers, um... Canada, let's go down, we'll just scroll down a bit. Interest rate news, and they're expecting a rate rise. So something to be aware of there also. If you're Canadian, tra trading Canadian pairs or New Zealand pairs on that day, be careful, guys. Then on Thursday, Aussie or Australian unemployment or employment numbers, depends which way you read it, at, can be a market mover, so be careful there. That's followed closely by the Euro main refinancing rate, which is basically the interest rates out of Europe. So be careful there. It's zero, zero, but it's below zero, I think. I'm not sure. You can just click on this yellow box if you want to know what it is. It tells you what it is, etc. cetera. Uh, it just explains what, what it all is. It's all a bit confusing. The old Euro refinancing uh, <laughs> rate, whatever they call it. Just be careful there. It does affect the markets. Uh, what else we got? On Thursday, core retail sales in the US. Then Friday, pretty quiet. Why is that quiet? Ah, Friday, April 15th, that'd be Good Friday, Easter. So the Western world, most of the Western world will be closing down on Friday. So it's probably a nothing day there. So Thursday is probably a really the last trading day. The good thing is living in Cambodia, um, I get to celebrate my third new year for the year, if that makes any sense. So January the 1st, we're... Yeah, most of the Western world has their celebration. We've done that one, obviously. Um, Tet, or the Chinese Lunar New Year with Vietnam and China. Uh, that was in February. I've done that. And Cambodia's apparently got their New Year next week. So <laughs> three from three. Uh, okay. All right, let's move on. All right, let's go to this Word document. This one here. Um, all right. So with these videos, and look, I know they're not the greatest videos, I've been gibbering already. If you do like them, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. All I'm trying to do is get the point across how the trades are going, what the setups are, etc. Uh, I'm not here to make a Hollywood production by any means. I'm not going to slap anyone's because they made a comment about their wife at the Oscars, that's for sure. But the videos are just to just to get the point across and get show you what's happening with the trades. So... If you're wondering, if you've never seen my videos before, wondering what's on the charts, then this document here to explains all the different settings and what the indicators are and what the different colours are. So you can pause the video, read that if you want. Uh, I'll just scroll down a bit so you can read it. Um, yeah, so basically anything in red means sell, anything in um, blue is buy or green is buy. So... That's the main things. Red dotted lines like a stop loss. Big numbers like parity or round numbers, etc., are green dashed lines. Zero, MAC lag, zero lag MACDs, MACD platinum is the bottom indicator. 
oscillates around the zero level. Generally, I'm looking to sell when it's above the zero level and buy when it's below the zero level. That's the general rules. So that's that's it for the, the settings, all right? So let's go to the charts now, because that's what we're here to see, obviously. Now, this is trading view. I do all my analysis on trading view. This is my watch list on the right. Uh, if it's, it's not a, not every trade on the, not every pair on the planet, I understand that. I just want to keep it, these are just to give you trade examples, nothing else, trade setup examples. So if it's highlighted in dark blue, it means there's trade on, no action taken. Light blue means a trade on, some action taken. If it's in uh, orange or yellow, it means I want to talk about it in this video for some reason. And if there's no highlight, it means there's no trade on. So we've got trades on everything by looks, except for the silver, which is down the bottom here. So we'll start off with the Aussie Swiss. Now, remember, guys, and I'll tell you this every video, I call these trades at the time. So none of this is after the fact. I take the, I take the screenshot. I call the trade live at the time, take the screenshot, post the screenshot, and save that to a shared folder everyone's got access to. And also sometimes put them on trading view. So there's plenty of, it's no, so there's a lot of pressure on me. So, <laughs> well, it's not pressure on me, but you know what I mean. It's very... Um, I'm accountable. That's the word I'm probably looking for. So we took the sell here. This is Oz Swiss. This is an alphabetical order. You'll see my notes on the chart here. Normally it's got the pair, the date, the signal, and my thoughts on the signal. So that's down here. Stop loss there. So it took a sell here on the um, the Oz Swiss. Now this was close, very close to my stop loss. It actually came within two pips. My stop loss is at seven zero nine six seven. If you look up here, you'll see the high when I go across there. 70946. So we're 2.1 pips below the stop. Now, it is quite possible, depending on your broker, what time of the day, what the spread was, etc., you could have been stopped out there. I wasn't, so I'm going to say I'm still in. I'm 2.1 pips short of it, which is good. So it's come down, it's come back towards my um, entry level. And now there's even more regular divergence forming, regular bearish divergence forming. So it's, it's a stronger signal. See, the MACD platinum still going down. Price has gone up, close to my stop, but coming back down. This was a high risk trade initially. Uh, it was a second attempt at the sell. There was the first one there, stopped out in here somewhere, I'd imagine. And now this is the second attempt at it. So it's the Oz Swiss, we're still in it, and we're just a little bit on the wrong side at the moment. Oz, Japanese Yen, another one I took the sell up here. All right, we're still in a buy from here. Now, you'll see the notes on the right generally refer to the the um, the most current trade. The ones on the left, sort of other trades, so I keep multiple trades on. So let's just move the stop up. We're the buy, we can't lose on the buy. There's the buy taken there. We've already closed half. Stop's up here. So we'll just move the stop up a little bit. I generally keep the stop somewhere between the 50 and the 100 EMA, so this is a 50, there's a 100, so I just put it in no man's land in the middle there. So we're locking in profit there, so life's good there. The sell, we took the sell here, it was a high risk trade, so we're against the trend, the price is a long way away from the MAs, Moving, uh, the MACD platinum's a long way above the zero level. And again, now, it went again, it initially went in my favour, but it's come up against me, similar to the Oz Swiss, now it's starting to drop down again, we've got this double top forming, stop wasn't threatened, which is good. And we're locking in more profit on the buy. So not looking too bad. We're good because with the buy still on. But the sell's not that bad either, really. I'm expecting some downside still. Again, look at the MACD heading down. Price is now starting to head down. Aussie USD. Now, the last trade here was a sell. Now, we've had a few goes at this. You can see one here. And another one here. You can refer to my notes there. Uh, stopped there for a loss, then closed for a loss. So it wasn't a big loss, the second one, but the first one was a full stop out. Now this is our third attempt there. We've got all this divergence here. You can see all the divergence, bearish divergence. These big levels here, that's the 70 cent level, and that's a 75 cent level. So they're big levels on the Aussie. Come up, uh, right up really past through the 75 cent level. Got the sell signal up here. It's a high risk trade uh, against the trend, which is obviously up. And and we're right on that 75 cent level too. You can, as I said, you can read my notes, third attempt, 
but the MACD has been above the zero level for a long time. And remember, this oscillates around the zero level. So just see how we go. At the moment, we're looking good. Nothing spectacular, but we're looking good. Now, I'm just keeping an eye on the MACD Platinum now and see how we go there. But the Aussie USD looking good. CAD Swiss. All right, we're in a sell here, going nowhere fast. <laughs> uh, went against me last week, then it's starting to come down, but Friday popped up again. So this pair can move sideways for a long time. So you just got to be patient with it. It's not it's not ideal pair to trade on the daily time frame, but I'm just trying to mix it up a bit. That's all. Euro Swiss in a sell here. Uh, now I call this. On the 7th of April, which is uh, that open there, in here, it was going nowhere. MACD Platinum should have zero level. Probably not enough to close half, not enough profit there, but all I've done is drag my stop down nice and tight. So really nice and tight. So even if it goes against me now, MACD Platinum's below zero level. If it turns and goes up, it's not, not going to be a huge loss at all. So if we risk, initially risk, say, um, 1% or 2% and we're up here. Now that risk has been reduced by at least two thirds, probably three quarters completely, which is good. But we're still profitable at the moment, which is good. Euro pound, yeah, this is another one. It's, a, it's been a pain to trade this one. It's a tough one, it's a, it's a tough pair to trade on the daily time frame. but I'm not trying to cherry pick pairs and that. I wanna just try and balance it out with the number of currencies I use in this watch list. So this is on the list, so we'll see how we go. Now, this sell here was a failure, so it's the 23rd of March, uh, closed for a loss on an opposite filter. So yeah, bang, we, we probably stopped out or closed out, or it was a loss. Now, this is another go at it. Um, slightly high risk as the market is flat, as in starting to flatten out a bit, and there's a higher high on price, so you get the impression that the trend's starting to head up, but it's still a sell signal. MAs are down, it's a sell signal. T took it. Now, the MACD Platinum's gone through the zero level pretty quickly. I think on, um, yeah, on Thursday, I've moved the stop right down, tightened the stop right up down to here. I don't want to risk too much on this trade at all. And I am in this trade, in my private trading too, so it's um, something I've got to sort of be wary of. So I've dragged it right down there. So no dramas, that's a euro pound. It's not looking that convincing, if you know what I mean. Euro USD highlighting orange because there's a reason for that. Now, let's have a look. Right, we're in the sell signal from 14th of Feb, which is back here, which is good. Now, let's have a look. We might move that stop down a little bit. Just bring it down a bit. Ah, no, it's all right. It's there. There's fine. It's above this high here. So we're locking in profit there. We can't lose. Took this buy here on 10th of March. And it went nowhere fast and it popped up and I called a stop move up to here on that. Then we got the sell signal here and there was, someone did ask a pretty valid question, why didn't I just close out the buy when the sell presented? And in hindsight, I probably should have. I said I was going to give it another 24 hours and it didn't. I didn't need to because it took me out, stopped me out. So I took a small lot. Smaller loss than I normally would. The stop was down here originally, so I moved it up. So I reduced my risk by about half there. Um, in the meantime, took this sell on the 4th of April. So we're now in the sell and it's going nicely. We'll give it, it's getting, MACD Platinum's getting close to zero level. But in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll bring the stop down level with the other stop there. So they're both those sell stops from the same place. And this buy trade is gone. So we'll get rid of that. Um, we took a loss on that, so we just don't want to clutter up the chart, so we see what we got here. And that's stop there. So now we've got two cells. One cell here, locked in profit. Second cell, stop reduced. And we're heading down, probably going to close. The thing is, too, we're getting close to this low here. So if you look at this low here, um, sort of along that area there, we're getting close to that area. You could make an argument that's already in there now. So that it that is a good time to close half. MACD Platinum's close to zero level. We're getting to the previous low. Close half. You can even bring your stop down tight if you wish. It's up to you. You know, you might drop down, say, a four-hour chart and just have a look, see what the four hours doing, and you know, bring your stop down. It's 
probably know we're really obvious it's up here at the moment you could probably bring it down across these highs here or something like that there's nothing obvious that's the euro usd looking good so we can mark that it's all tidied up pound cad uh, now i've had one two goes at this this is my third go stops here took it on what's that thursday morning bang up she goes nicely then friday Canadian um, employment numbers come out, and here we go. We're back at break uh, break at the entry level again. It's a it's been a tough pair to trade. There's a big nice move down move. I wish I was still in that, but I'm not. Um, in some of my private trading, I think I'm still in that trade down. So, but not in this one. That's a pound cad trying to make some make up for some of these losses. Pound yen, not too bad now. We're in a buy here from the 15th of March. So let's move, the stop's already been moved up. Let's move it up a bit higher, right? Eh? We'll, we'll just bring it up to this level here. So we're locking profit between there and there. So we're looking good there. Took a sell here. High risk trade as the trend's going up. Look at the MAs are starting to spread. Um, there's no supporting divergence. The only reason I take these sort of trades is because price is a long way away from the moving averages and the MACD platinum is a long way above the zero level. So they're, they're what I call like extreme levels. Um, so generally price has to go to the MAs or the MAs goes to price and the MACD has to go to the zero level. But in the meantime, obviously price can do what it damn well pleases and go wherever it wants. So it's heading up, heading up. It hasn't got in my favor at all. But the good thing is I've also got this partial buy on, so I can just keep on dragging that up, and any buy profit off offsets any loss, loss, any sell loss, short loss, you know what I mean. So on my sell here, if it loses, the buy is going to offset it. So it's not the end of the world. Oh, lost my cross here. It's not the end of the world, but it's um, not looking. What I'm thinking at the moment, you can see the MACD is still going down, price is going up, so one of them's wrong, you know. So I'm thinking this is going to roll over to the downside and see how we go. New Zealand CAD, highlighted. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you why it's highlighted. I was in this sell here. We're still in this buy. Let's get that one out of the way. So we're in a buy from the um, 4th of Feb. The, so the signal was taken on the 4th. So that's good. There's a stop there for the buy. We're close to it. Hang on, what is it? Look at this. So that's 85964. It's a low. 85984. Ah, low. 86. Oh, no, no, we still, we still haven't touched the stop yet. So we're on the buy, we're very close to the stop. Now, the, the reason it's highlighted is during the week, there was a sell signal here I took. This thing's gone sideways, nowhere, nowhere. Got a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level, hence the grey vertical line. And and it was in here, I think it was on the 7th. Yeah, it was on the 7th. Uh, on the open there, I called to close that cell. <laughs> Should have left it one more day, eh? <laughs> Look at that. Bang, down she goes. But I've already called it as out. That's why that is highlighted in orange. <laughs> I even made notes there, so I can't lie to you. Um, so I closed that cell out of break in. In hindsight, not the, not the smartest thing I've done this week, but who cares? We're still on the buy, which is locked in profit. So we didn't lose anything on the sell, and we're going to take a, a win on the buy. But it could have been better. New Zealand, Japanese yen, uh, sell trade up here. Again, high-risk trade against the trend. Trend, look at the MA starting to spread. Big move, nice big clean move. Look at that. And that's one of the reasons I take these trades. Price, again, long way from the MAs. And the MACD platinum long way above the zero level, extreme levels. In the meantime, price has sort of gone sideways. MACD platinum heading down. So, and we're entry is we're close to the entry level. Stop hasn't been threatened. So, what I'm expecting is price to come back down towards the MAs or something like that, or the MAs to go to price. You know, so yeah, I'm, that's probably Captain Obvious there, but that's that's what I'm looking for. New Zealand USD took a sell here. Uh, right. Uh, so there was the first one. We took a loss there. Pretty similar to the Aussie USD. The New Zealand and the Aussie sort of moved together. They're very correlated. They're very similar chart patterns most of the time. 
Um, so this number here is the 70 cent level. Look at that, bounced off it nicely and come down. So that's one of the reasons I like that trade. Set up, even though when I took it, the MACD platinum was close to zero level, there was regular bearish divergence there. My concern was that we were at the zero level and this previous sort of um, resistance level, which normally resistance becomes support when it's broken and vice versa, but it's broken clean through it and it's heading down. Uh, so I'll just keep an eye on that. I might bring the stop down a bit. Look, I'm, look let's just bring this. Nah, we'll leave the stop where it is. No rush. I'll give it another couple of days. So that's the New Zealand USD looking good. Gold. Now, this has gone sideways for like, how many days is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten. Three weeks or so. Three weeks. Every day is five, five candles is one week. Um, so it's the gold bugs. When gold moves, you hear the gold bugs come out and they start jibber jabbering about their trading. Um, but when it doesn't move, you don't hear boo from them. <laughs> so in the meantime, we are in a buy here and with a stop there and there's probably not much I can do about that. I'll just leave it where it is. And I took a sell up here and the stop's already locked in profit and I'm going to leave that on too. There's not much. So we've been stuck in no man's land between these two trades for a while and we can't lose on either. So I guess it's a perfect scenario, but you know, ideally you want to see a market moving, but this is, unless you're getting killed on overnight interest rates on both sides or something like that, it's not a bad setup. Uh, silver, it's the only one we haven't got trade on. I might as well show it. Nothing happening, potentially setting up for a buy. That's what I'm looking at. There's already been a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level. Now we've got potential hidden bullish divergence forming. You can see it here. This is a trade I take every day of the week. If Say we got a buy on Tuesday morning. And I get, the thing is with TradingView, if there was a buy on Monday, I'd know about it. Whereas MT4, MT5, you don't. But TradingView lets you know on Friday close, which I like. Uh, but there's nothing there. So, so yeah, if Tuesday there's a buy signal, then I'm taking that every day of the week if it's hidden bullish divergence. Everyone knows I love my hidden divergence. All right, let's move down. Now, these next three are just for, on the charts for more curiosity. This is the US dollar, just to see how this trade signals work on it, and it's powering up nicely the US dollar. US 500, which is just a United States um, stock, Overall stock market, I guess, is, is probably the biggest stock market on the planet. Um, I just like to see where the signals are and what the, what the overall market is. So we've got this sort of high up here, the previous high, which is in um, early in the new year. And we can't see it break this hot previous high here. We sort of come close and it's start to roll over again. Last thing was a sell. So we've just seen how we go on the US stock market. And the other one's Bitcoin. You probably can't see it, but it's, these numbers here are the um, 40 and 50 and again the last signal was a sell on Bitcoin back on the 1st of April and it's worked out nicely if you've taken it so again I've just marked up the, the valid trades buys and sells on Bitcoin just to show you how it works the system that does work on all pairs all currencies all instruments basically you just got to remember certain currencies have like for example if you look at the stock market it's Got a bullish buy, so your best is taking taking buy trades, and if you want, ignore the sell trades, etc. All right, guys, that's about it for the charts. So I'll bring up that um, word document again if I can find it. I'm in my shocker this morning. Um, yeah, now all my trades, as I said, they're called at the time on the day, so they're posted in the Jagfx Facebook group, Jagfx Telegram channels, and Matt from Family Man Trading's Discord channel. So anyone's more than welcome to join any of those um, social media channels and check out the trades yourselves. And during, I do a running commentary, any trade management, etc. I call on those trades during the week. So it's all very transparent, all easy to see. There's thousands of trades I've called over the last few years. So nothing to hide, all on the daily time frame. And you can drop down the lower time frames. It works on the five minute charts, the one hour charts, the four hour charts. I'm trading the four, six, eight, 12 and daily chart timeframes at the moment. Um, four pairs on the high probability on all those timeframes and eight hours I'm hammering with another system based on the QQE advance. So it's, I'm 
pretty busy and I can sort of hit all those time frames, which is no problems at all. All right, it's 25 minutes. Thanks for watching the video. Enjoy your day, enjoy your weekend, stay safe wherever you are, and I will chat to you good people during the week. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.